ஹாய் காய்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு நம்ம கேபிஎஸ்சி அகாடமி கர்நாடக எக்கனாமிக் சர்வே வீடியோ சீரீஸ் லெட் எஸ் கண்டினியூ வித் ஆர் சாப்டர் டூ வி ஆர் டிஸ்கஸிங் அபவுட் அர்பன் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் இன் த ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ டுடே லெட் எஸ் சி அபவுட் டெவலப்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் பெங்களூரு மெட்ரோபாலிட்டன் ரீஜன் So first of all let us discuss about Bengaluru Metropolitan Region Development Authority The Bengaluru Metropolitan Region Development Authority is established under the Bengaluru Metropolitan Region Development Authority Act 1985 for the purpose of proper and orderly development of the area within the Bengaluru Metropolitan Region This authority prepared a structure plan in 1998 based on the availability and future prospects in respect of natural resources and infrastructure and the trend of urbanization in the region was approved by the government during 2005. As per the structure plan the area suitable for urbanization have been categorized as area planning zones and areas where agriculture is predominant occupation and forestry is abundant conservation has been stressed more and such areas have been classified as interstitial zones so the structure plan prepared by bmrda is in the nature of a broad area development plan for the entire bengaluru and requires preparation of detailed sector specific and area specific plans separate planning authorities and urban development authorities have been constituted in this regard under ktcp act 1961 so here is the list of authorities created for this regard now let us look at other initiatives proposed by bmrda So separate local planning area for satellite town ring road was notified by government and BMRDA constituted STRR planning authority in 2016 under KTCP Act 1961 also the authority constituted a separate local planning area authority for greater bengaluru bidhi smart city now let us study about the famous bengaluru mahanagara palike The Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike was established as Bengaluru City Corporation in 1949 by merging two separate municipalities which were in charge of administration of city area and the cantonment area of the city at present for Bengaluru which has a area of 224 square kilometer there are 198 wards under BBMP Now let us look at the initiatives taken up by BBMP First of all urban renewal initiative Mukhya Mantri Nagarotana this scheme aims at developing infrastructure in Bengaluru through monetary support and BBMP has also taken up lake development works which aims at providing monetary support for development of lakes of Bengaluru Now let us look at Bengaluru Metro Rail Corporation Limited before that here is a mains question for you which says mass rapid transit travel pros and cons you can start writing so to implement the mass rapid transit travel system which is metro rail in bengaluru bmrcl was established by government of karnataka with equal share owned between government of india and government of karnataka bmrcl is implementing metro rail project in bengaluru in phased manner Now let us look at Bengaluru Development Authority. The Bengaluru Development Authority was established on 16th January 1976 under a separate act of state legislature which is BDA Act 1976. The authority has been established as city planning authority for Bengaluru region. Now let us look at the objectives of BDA. The objective of the authority shall be to promote and secure the development of Bengaluru metropolitan area and for the purpose the authority shall have the power to acquire hold manage and dispose movable and immovable property whether within or outside the area under its jurisdiction and to carry out building engineering and other operations and generally do all things necessary of expedient for the purpose of development 
Also, Bengaluru Development Authority performs development functions as per the directions of the government such as preparation and development plans for group housing and layouts, approval of building plans under these layouts and other statutory functions under KTCP Act 1961. Moving on, in India, there are a number of metropolitan cities. Added on, there are so many other cities which can be transformed as metropolitan cities. So with the objective of enabling further growth in metropolitan cities and helping other cities transform to metropolitan cities, Government of India has launched a number of schemes. First of all, Smart City Mission. Smart City Mission is a urban renewal and retrofitting program by Government of India with mission to develop 100 smart cities across the country, making them citizen friendly and sustainable. The next scheme is Atal Mission for Regeneration and Urban Transformation, shortly called as Amrut Scheme. It was launched in 2015. The Amrut Scheme is an initiative to provide basic civic amenities to urban areas to improve the quality of life with major focus to the poor and disadvantaged. The next scheme is Urban Infrastructure Development Scheme for Small and Medium Towns. So this scheme aims at providing monetary support for developing infrastructure in small and medium towns. So guys, as already discussed, let us see the central schemes in detail in future. Before continuing our discussion, there is a small topic. So in Karnataka, there is a scheme for implementation of commercial infrastructure projects in vacant lands of urban local bodies. So the government of Karnataka for this purpose is acting through Karnataka Water and Sanitation Pooled Fund Trust, which is aided by Karnataka Urban Infrastructure Development Finance Corporation. So the aim of the scheme is to improve the real estate capacity of urban local bodies. So this trust that is Karnataka Water and Sanitation Pool Fund Trust will also assist urban local bodies in borrowing funds. Now let us look at some of the externally aided projects that have been implemented in Karnataka. First of all Karnataka Municipal Reforms Project. So the Karnataka Municipal Reforms Project aims to improve the quality of life of citizens by improving the delivery of urban services and promoting good governance among the urban local bodies. It has various components. First of all, institutional development component. This component supports for implementation of state-wide reforms, namely implementation of double entry accurate based accounting system in 158 urban local bodies and computerization of municipal functions in 164 ULBs of state including Bengaluru. Also this component provides for capacity building to the ULB officials and elected representatives in identified 21 areas for which State Institute of Urban Development Mysore has been appointed as nodal agency. Also this component supports preparation of geo-reference based maps for 27 urban areas. A dedicated urban mapping cell has been constituted under control of Directorate of Town Planning and Country Planning to oversee the implementation. Also under this project there is a municipal investment component. This component provides investment support for urban infrastructure improvement in selected 32 urban local bodies of the state. Also there is a Bengaluru development component under which Bengaluru road rehabilitation program and Greater Bengaluru Underground Drainage Program has been taken. Under Bengaluru Road Rehabilitation Program, about 125 kilometers of core city road networks including improvement of footpath, drainage etc. have been taken up. The road rehabilitation work has already been completed by BBMP. The most important fact about this program is that it is World Bank assisted. Please remember this. So as we are discussing about externally aided projects of Karnataka, let us also discuss about Northern Karnataka Urban Sector Investment Program. The Northern Karnataka Urban Sector Investment Program is the third Asian Development Bank assisted urban development project of Karnataka. 
This project aims at providing basic amenities to Northern Karnataka region like 24 bar 7 water supply, community development programs, the state of art, sewage treatment plants, etc. So, the expected impact of the investment program is improved urban infrastructures and services resulting in the overall improvement of the quality of the life in ULBs where this program is being implemented. This will lead to increase in economic opportunities and growth in Northern Karnataka region which reduces imbalances between Northern Karnataka and the rest of the state. Now, let us study about urban planning. Urban planning in the state as in the rest of the country has been largely identified with town planning or land use planning. It is necessary to broaden the vision of urban planning process and integrate spatial planning with economic development planning. In this regard, Government of India introduced 74th Constitutional Amendment Act 1992. The 74th Amendment has provided a new framework to the planning process and provides certain mandates. The first mandate is constitution of a district planning committee at district level charged with responsibility of preparing a draft district development plan. The second mandate provided is constitution of a metropolitan planning committee in every metropolitan area which would be responsible to prepare a draft development plan for the metropolitan area. Also the 74th amendment provides for municipalities which are responsible for urban planning including town planning and for the preparation of plans for economic development and social justice. Now let us look at a mains question. What is the necessity of creating metropolitan cities? What are the measures required to create a metropolitan city? Now let us look at a quick fact. This paragraph briefs about spatial planning. You can go through this. Now let us study about planning at city level. Under the constitution, urban planning, town planning, social and economic development and the protection of environment are to be performed by urban local bodies which prepare master plan for their respective cities. In Karnataka at present master plans under the KTCP Act are prepared by local planning authorities or UDAs. It is proposed to prepare only one plan at the city level which includes the spatial plan, development plan and the development control measures by the municipality. In this regard, the capacity building of ULBs is essential to take up planning responsibilities. Now let us study about town and country planning. Preparation of master plans is essential for the orderly development of cities, towns and villages in the state. In this regard, the Karnataka Town and Country Planning Act 1961 has been extended to 157 urban centers in the state so far and statutory authorities have been constituted in this urban centers by declaring local planning area. Accordingly, 30 urban development authorities excluding Bengaluru Development Authority and 48 planning authorities are functioning in the state. All these authorities get technical assistance from Karnataka State Town Planning Board. Now let us study about financing urban development. The resource base of urban local bodies are own revenue, government grants, user charges and external assistance. The urban local bodies require the financial resources for provision of municipal services, operation and maintenance of assets infrastructure development and debt servicing. At present also urban local bodies do have some problems with their financing. In general the urban local bodies are characterized by low municipal receipts leading to low municipal expenditure and low level of municipal services. This can be explained by low elasticity and buoyancy of local taxes poor tax administration and lack of financial autonomy for local governments. In this regard, financing ULBs become very important. This function in Karnataka is done by Department of Municipal Administration. Here we have given the rules and responsibilities of Directorate of Municipal Administration. You can go through this. 
at present government of karnataka has provided certain provisions for municipal financing through tax revenue collection municipalities are empowered to levy taxes on buildings or lands or both advertisements toll on vehicles other than those taxed under karnataka motor vehicles taxation act 1957 and lastly water rate on water supplied by municipalities also we must study how capital expenditure of urban local bodies is financed capital expenditure is usually met through budget provision and institutional finance institutions such as hudco and multilateral agencies like adb and world bank have been extending financial assistance to ulbs and other urban development authorities to build infrastructure and housing now here is a mains question as in charge of a urban local body suggest the ways to finance urban development programs of your jurisdiction start writing now let us study about urban governance the structure of urban governance in karnataka and in india in the context of local government stands very far from the philosophy of constitution and the theory of decentralization the colonial authoritarian structure of city governance continues to this day with resistance to sharing political power with local urban institutions it is therefore one could find a scenario where apart from a urban local body there is a host of parastatal urban development and departmental agencies dealing with urban services this is particularly so in metropolitan cities where there are separate government agencies dealing with water supply and sewerage transport land and infrastructure development etc this multi institutional approach has led to lack of holistic look at urban development in this background the passage of 74th constitutional amendment act has provided new opportunities for urban governance reforms in the country after this we must study about working of urban local bodies which we have already discussed in the video now let us study about municipal reforms cell so it is an exclusive cell dedicated for municipal reforms the cell has an in-house data center with centralized software applications and it is entrusted with various responsibilities now let us study a quick fact here we have given a list of urban challenges you can go through this so guys we are concluding with our discussion before concluding here is a reminder in the description box you shall find the links to download the ebooks of namak apsc academy so guys thank you for watching if you like the video please like and subscribe namak apsc youtube channel for more queries contact us thank you again